three, two, one. Recognized as the unfortunate star who became a victim of addiction and alcohol. Grace Lee Whitney was horrified when she saw this news on headlines of many newspapers and magazines. Continue watching to find out the shocking secret that led her to the point of addiction. But first, who was Grace Lee Whitney? Whitney was born in 1930 in Michigan. Ever since she was three years old, she loved to dance, sing, act, and basically perform anything in front of other people. During an interview, she said that the moment found out her passion was quite weird and funny at the same time. One day, when she was young, she just decided to open the refrigerator door to grab a snack to eat. But rather than doing that, she easily got distracted from the light that turned on from opening the fridge. At that moment, Moment, she started singing and dancing while imagining that the ice cubes were her audience. Whitney then added that she thought that the ice cubes melted because they were so impressed with her performance. Now, that story is enough to make anybody laugh. Whitney started a professional career at 14. When Whitney was a teenager, she started out singing on WJR in Detroit, Michigan. She was easily accepted after auditioning for the position. Before starting, Whitney had been singing with a band at school, but this was the first time her voice was actually recorded. She was hired to sing all the different parts, and so if they wanted Whitney to sing soprano, she would even do that. But that's what they hired her in the first place, because Whitney could play basically everything. Whitney later worked in a little band in Chicago called The Preview, opposite Buddy Rich's band. She was in a trio, and the trio was her first time on stage opposite a large big band. How she became a global success. Actress Grace Lee Whitney is both one of Star Trek's most satisfying renaissance stories as well as one of its best cautionary tales. Whitney acted as the stunningly gorgeous and deeply professional character Yeoman Janice Rand in the first eight seasons of the original Star Trek series. Starting a successful acting career for Whitney was really challenging. She worked hard all day just to be accepted in a Broadway show. Her first ever Broadway show was Top Banana with Bill Silvers. She then went on to play Lucy Brown in Three Penny Opera. When talking about the experience, Whitney said that in order to get the role, the casting team told her that she had to dye her hair black and eat heavily for one month straight to gain 20 pounds. During this period, Whitney changed so much even her own mother didn't recognize her anymore. But this opportunity led her to move to Hollywood and get a role with Marilyn Monroe, Jack Lemmon, and Tony Curtis in Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot. Whitney continued appearing in a lot of Western shows like Death Valley Days and Bonanza. She was also in the pilot of The Rifleman and did an episode of Bewitched, and then did the pilot for Police Story with Gene Roddenberry, which was how she got cast in Star Trek. Grace Lee Whitney had a secret crush while working on Star Trek. At first, Whitney was supposed to act innocent, dedicated, and excellent in her motives for wanting to be on the Enterprise. On the other hand, Janice Rand was willing to learn to be a secretary to the captain, whom, of course, Whitney immediately developed feelings for. But when speaking about these feelings, she said that it was not exactly love she had for him. It was more of a secret crush. She also added that it could not be consummated. It had to be love from afar, unrequited love between the captain and her. Her experience on Star Trek. When Whitney was auditioning for the show, she didn't really have a clue about what it was going to be about. These made it challenging for her on how to act in the audition properly in order to get the role. Even after getting accepted for the audition, she was told that the show was only going to be about a ship, which was going to be the wagon train, and all the characters on the ship were going to have some experiences out in space. Whitney then revealed an interesting detail while shooting Star Trek. She said that showrunners were very careful with the way the characters would appear when interacting with each other. One scene that Whitney had with Shatner got instantly deleted only because the actors seemed as if they were too close and formed a connection. Since Shatner was supposed to fall in love with a woman on another planet, showrunners didn't want viewers to get their hopes up in there being something between both actors. In the end, this part of Star Trek ended up becoming a golden behind-the-scenes moment. Whitney's Dark Secret 
Whitney had a lot of problems with substance addiction and even alcohol abuse. This somehow started when she realized she wasn't going anywhere with the character on Star Trek. Soon after the showrunners found out her weird behavior, they dropped her from the show. Unfortunately, she was listed on Hollywood's Skid Row, which was the most horrible thing that could ever happen to a Hollywood actress at that time, especially someone as popular as her. Being lost, she eventually found comfort in alcohol and other substances so she could numb the pain. But this feeling also came from something she had kept secret for many years. Whitney had been forced into doing things she didn't want and even assaulted by one of the men of the production team. The assault affected Whitney's career and mental state for years on end. But on the verge of overdosing, she realized that either she had to make a change or she would end up being known as another washed up star that passed away from addiction problems. When Whitney got sober, she easily went back to the film industry. The Star Trek cast and crew also allowed her back into the fold. Whitney even managed to appear in the motion picture The Search for Spock and The Undiscovered Country, as well as in the flashback episode of Voyager and in the fan films World's Enough and Time and of Gods and Men. Whitney married and divorced two times. She had two sons from her marriages, but after getting divorced in 1991, she decided never to get married again. In 1993, she moved to Corsgold, California, where she settled down for a slower and more peaceful life. Here, Whitney also continued her journey to help others remain sober and become clean of their addictions. One of her sons even claimed that his mother wanted to be known more as a survivor of addiction than as a Star Trek cast member later on in her life. The actress's last film appearance was in the fan fiction films of Gods and Men in 2007, while her final scene appearance was in the William Shatner documentary The Captains in 2011. Unfortunately, she passed away at her home in Corsgold on May 1st, 2015 at age 85 because of natural causes. Why do you think Whitney kept quiet about the assault for years? Do you believe she was scared they would take her off of Star Trek if she would speak up about it? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget